Hi, I'm Petty Officer Nico Melendez. Join Corporal Scott Pesca and me on Navy Marine Corps News. This week, the Navy says goodbye to its first Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy, Master Chief Dale Black. Join us as we go along for the ride of our lives with the Navy's parachute demonstration team, the Leapfrogs. And Okinawa-based Marines visit Iwo Jima to remember World War II Marines who fought and died on this Pacific island. These stories and more on Navy Marine Corps News. This week on Navy Marine Corps News, the first Master Chief Petty Officer of the Navy, Master Chief Black, passes away at his home in Florida. Join us as we go along for the ride of our lives with the Navy's parachute demonstration team, the Leapfrogs, in Key West. And Okinawa-based Marines relive life as World War II Marines when they visit Mount Saribachi and the island of Iwo Jima. These stories and more next on Navy Marine Corps News. How you doing? I'm Chief Petty Officer Johnny Hoffman with Navy Elite Frogs, and you're watching Navy and Marine Corps News. Welcome to Navy Marine Corps News. I'm Petty Officer Nico Melendez. And I'm Corporal Scott Pesca. There have been nine MCPONs since the Navy created that post more than 30 years ago. Master Chief Del Black was the first Navy senior enlisted advisor and served part of his tour while Admiral Elmo Zumwalt was Chief of Naval Operations. You can't be everything to everybody, but you can be fair to everybody. Mick Pon Black died recently at his home in Winter Park, Florida. He was 77. In a recent interview, he reflected on his tour as the first Mick Pon and what it meant to sailors. And the position was established as a line of communications from them to the top. And you were just the intermediate. And I never referred to it as my office, I did this, I did that. It's we. And everything that came out of this office was with the stamp of approval of the enlisted personnel. Master Chief Black enlisted in 1941, and on December 7th of that year, he was aboard the battleship Maryland in Pearl Harbor. He was also the first Navy enlisted man to receive the Distinguished Service Medal. Mick Pond Jim Hurt called Master Chief Black an icon whose accomplishments will always be remembered. Navy leaders testified before two Senate committees last week on the state of the Navy and Marine Corps and to express gratitude for the fiscal year 2000 pay raise. Chief Tom Crydell has that story from Capitol Hill. That, uh, the Secretary of the Navy, Marine Chief of Naval Operations, and Commandant of the Marine Corps testified before a Senate Appropriations Subcommittee for Defense and the Senate Armed Services Committee. The CNO told the Senators the fleet is seeing some improvements in retention based on changes in the pay structure and the improvements in quality of life. On the non-deployed side, we continue to work hard at unburdening our sailors and empowering their commanding officers and better resourcing the fleet as they work their way through this thing called the interdeployment training cycle. And indeed, we are making some progress, but there's much more to do. Secretary Danzig told the Senate's Appropriations Committee, Marine Corps recruiting has never looked better. I view uh, Marine Corps uh, recruiting as the very model of what we want. We're now into our fifth year of month-by-month -month achievement of goals. Uh, at the same time, Navy recruiting has grown healthier. The Commandant praised the efforts of Marine Corps recruiters and their incredible success, but acknowledged the need to continue quality of life enhancements for each Marine in uniform. And we're working hard to make sure that uh, uh, the quality of life standards that our people in uniform expect for their families, the safe and secure environment of the base, the stable, uh, good educational system and job satisfaction, spousal contentment with the service life, Overall, uh, as I sit here today, your Marine Corps manpower-wise is in good shape. Chief Tom Cardell, Navy Marine Corps News. On the recruiters. During the testimony, Admiral Johnson thanked the senators for their support and announced that this would be his final scheduled appearance before them. Every year, the Marine Corps holds a Sergeant's Major Symposium. It's a chance for senior enlisted Marines to come up with ideas to make the Corps better. This year, Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps Alfred McMichael hosted the first non-commissioned officer's symposium. The Marine Corps selected 20 sergeants from around the world to gather here in Washington, D.C. 
The week-long symposium consisted of several discussions on how to improve the Marine Corps. The discussions that we had came up with these bullets. Uh, on the last day of the symposium, the NCOs presented their ideas to the sergeant major and commandant of the Marine Corps. The commandant wants to make decisions, but he doesn't want to make decisions only on recommendation from staffers. He wants to make their decision based on the people that have to wear the gear, the people that have to live in the club, the people that have to deal with training. Some, some of it I think we were asking for a little too much perhaps, but that's the whole point. We ask for it and they decide what we'll get and what we won't get. The NCOs left the symposium knowing that the sergeant major and the commandant really cared what they had to say and are confident their ideas will be put to use. I don't think they would have taken 20 sergeants Marine Corps wide and had us take up the Sergeant Major of the Marine Corps' time, the Commandant's time, the Assistant Commandant's time, if they weren't going to use this information. It would have been uh, un unreal to bring these hard charges back to do what they've done and then table it or put it on the shelf. What they've done in there over, the, over this week was not to, to be put on the shelf to gather dust, but it was to be put out in the fleet to change uh, the, the way we do business. One of the things the Commandant brought up during the symposium was that he's considering adding martial arts into recruit training. Last year, USS Abraham Lincoln visited the city of Santa Barbara, California. Apparently, the residents there didn't get enough of the aircraft carrier, so they invited the ship back for another visit. Petty Officer Miranda Williams has the story. Sailors hit the streets of Santa Barbara recently when USS Abraham Lincoln pulled in for a week-long visit. Shops and restaurants were filled with sailors eager to experience this quiet California town. Many sailors took time to visit a local school and show off their Navy clown wigs. It's entertainment for us, really. Uh, yes. If we if you pull in somewhere, you know, I might not have only three days off, but if I can go to a hospital and make just one small child that's crying stop crying for that five minutes, you know, that's, that's worth it for me. Sailors also stayed on board USS Abraham Lincoln to volunteer. With over 2,500 visitors touring the ship every day, sailors were proud to give tours and answer questions. I'm always ready to show off the ship. It's pretty exciting when people get all enthusiastic and uh, they're all excited about this. You see the expression on people's faces and, and how in awe they are of the size of the ship and how clean we're keeping this ship. USS Abraham Lincoln sailors were excited when a very special former president visited. And in case you think your eyes are deceiving you, they aren't. That is former President Abraham Lincoln, or at least the country's best impersonator. It is indeed an honor to have, uh, have a room dedicated to me on this on this great ship, the USS Abraham Lincoln. Some other Santa Barbara celebrities came out to visit the ship too, and they say they enjoy meeting sailors. Hey, how are you? Well, anytime I've I've been out uh, on any of the ships, the men and women are so wonderful. They work so hard, and being around them it makes me uh, proud of them, proud to be an American. I'm always so impressed. With how hard they work and how seriously they take their jobs, and um, you know, from a civilian's point of view, it's just so impressive. So, we love you guys. Keep it up. From USS Abraham Lincoln, I'm Petty Officer Miranda Williams, Navy Marine Corps News. This year marks the 50th anniversary of the Korean War. And there are many events throughout the year to honor the men and women who served our country in Korea. One website you can take a look at is the Marine Corps homepage at www.usmc.mil. From there, click on Korean War Commemoration, and you'll find all kinds of information, including historical facts, veteran stories, and photographs. And if you'd like to get involved in this year's 50th anniversary, check out the schedule of events. Time for a break, but don't go away, because when we return, we take a look at the Navy's leapfrog. Stay with us. I'm Rob Lowe. You're watching the Navy Marine Corps News. Ten years ago, a baby born 16 weeks early had a 95% chance of dying. So, how could a baby born today under the same circumstances have a 95% chance of living? The National Naval Medical Center in Bethesda, Maryland has the answers. It's the March edition of All Hands Magazine. Were you born on the bayou? The River Rats of Special Boat Unit 22 train day and night to ensure there is no hiding from the Brown Water Navy. You wanna get dirty? Have fun with these sailors and Marines as they run waist high, mud in your eyes, great to be alive at the end, 10 kilometer run through mud. These doctors and hospital corpsmen took their expertise on the road. 
to a town in Kosovo where the people have been without dental and medical care for almost a year. And you might want to book a year in advance for this hotel in Disney World. It's not real expensive, and it's only for the military. It's the March edition of All Hands Magazine. Welcome back. Thanks for staying with us. The Leap Frogs are one of the Navy demonstration teams that perform shows around the country. And recently I got to spend some time with them down at Naval Air Station Key West, and I had a lot of fun. I was expecting something right out of a Navy recruiting commercial. Higher energy jumps 24-7. But what I discovered is jumping out of airplanes is only a small part of the job the Leap Frogs do. You know, just like, uh, uh, and then... They start off early in the morning, and before the Leap Frogs even walk into their plane, they go over their jumps again and again for success. These precautions are necessary to make it safe for the Leap Frogs to jump. And everyone lends a hand, including the only member of the team who's not a SEAL. I'm um, the team corpsman. I make sure that, you know, here for medical support, I don't jump with, with any of the uh, team. I'm not a SEAL. The guys are pretty, pretty cool. They treat me just like one of their own. HM2 is the team's doc, but his duties don't end there. He also monitors the radio and watches the landing zone for them. I have the PRC uh, 113 to communicate with the tower. Tower, this is drop zone, all jumpers are on the deck. I also have a Sabre radio that I communicate with the uh, parachute team. Hey, be advised, we got some planes coming in, landing, so you guys may be uh, circling. Pass up the winds, wind direction, and uh, any last minute information. With everyone working together, everything is perfect for the awesome aerial jumping I was expecting. Just watching them is cool, and these sailors say being on the team is nothing short of incredible. It's a privilege. I mean, it's something I've wanted to do for a few years, and uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. They might be having fun now, but it's not easy to get to this level. It's not going to happen overnight. Not even close. Over nine years I've been in, going on ten. So it's, it's a... Uh, it's been a while. I mean, it's been it all. It all comes with hard work. Nothing comes easy. But there are the perks. The Leap Frogs take part in some amazing events, like last year's Army Navy game. That was awesome. That's a, of all the shows that we do. That was by far the best show that we've done. We got to jump with the Golden Knights while we were there. You know, both uh, both service schools were there in full force, and uh, it's just a really good experience to be up there and uh, with all the all the tradition and everything, and be able to jump into that. Anytime we get to jump into a stadium in front of a big crowd, it's always a lot of fun. This week they're preparing for another stadium, or a ballpark anyway, with a jump prior to a preseason baseball game between the Royals and Braves. I'm just looking forward to uh, putting on a good show up there. Because so many people see the Leap Frogs, they are a great recruiting tool for getting people interested in all the exciting jobs in the Navy. These guys were so impressive, they even attracted some high profile spectators during their practice jump. I think it's, uh, it's awesome to watch them, where they start out from and where they end up. and. Uh, just sitting there kind of trying to imagine what it would be like uh, being up there and being one of those guys. I don't, uh, I don't know that I would have the courage to do it. Roger, one minute. I don't even see you guys. Seems like uh, if I did and I was up there, it would be an awful lot of fun to do. But, uh, and I'm sure it's fun for those guys to do in these situations, but not uh, in some more uh, intense com combative situations. The SEALs did their final jump into the game in front of a captivated audience. Oh, they were fantastic. Gives you a good feeling in your heart to know there are young men and women like that taking care of our country. America is great. There's nobody even comes close to us. That was pretty neat because um, I've never really seen people parachute out of the air before. I liked it when they brought down the American flag. Every time that national national anthem plays and uh, you know see one of our guys coming in or two of our guys coming in in a biplane definitely makes you feel patriotic and uh, proud to be an American. If you would like more information on the Leapfrogs or their future schedule check out their link off the SEAL webpage at www.sealchallenge.navy.mil. Late last month our news crew went to cover Marines from Marine Barracks, Washington DC training at the FBI Academy in Quantico, Virginia. Something they didn't expect was to take part in the exercise by pretending to be civilian press. We joined Corporal Dave Anarino in his role as a civilian reporter in Quantico. 
In just a few hours, the United States will sign a peace agreement with Colombia to end the so-called war on drugs. And of course, there are expected to be protesters, so they called in the Marines. But protesters aren't their only concern while waiting for the ambassador's arrival. Marines were told to be on the lookout for terrorists. And have you had any problems? No, sir, nothing major, sir. The protesters are becoming violent as the time nears for the ambassador's arrival. Woo! Right here, baby! Right here! I don't, I don't understand what their problem is. They just flail those sticks around and try and hit us. We don't, we're not touching them, we're not hurting them, but they hurt me. <laughs> Can I have your attention, please? You are in violation of your demonstration guidelines. Moments later, this suspicious character showed up, and it didn't take the Marines long to recognize who it was. One of the terrorists. Peter, I see they're all crowding around you. Of course, this was just a training exercise, but it was a very realistic one. The FBI has given us the usage of Hogan's Alley, uh, the facility we're at right now, and uh, this, this is about as realistic as it gets. It was so realistic that sometimes the Marines got into their roles a little too much. There's always friction. Uh, when you add aggressors, sometimes the exercise takes a life of its own. But the good part is you're forcing the small unit leaders to make decisions by themselves and not always wait for me to tell them what to do or wait for their platoon sergeant or platoon commander to tell them what to do. Excuse me, I have permission to talk to the ambassador. No, sir. No, sir. I, have I have permission to talk to the ambassador. Can I please come in? No, we need, we need to get him. We need to yeah, find out what's going back, on in here. Let's go back, please. Sure, go back. Back. I need to get in there. We do training like this to be prepared, basically, so you don't come out in a real life situation and everything isn't all clustered up. Their main mission was crowd control. Oh, step! 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 And for the Marines new to this type of training, it was a challenge. I've learned that uh, there's a lot of different uh, scenarios and situations that can come, that can arise. You never know what uh, people are going to do. You never know how other Marines are going to react. And uh, you just got to train for that and hope for the best. Why are you taking I'm up the front side, sir? I'm an American, yeah. Hey, I'm I'm too. Oh, yeah? Why are you taking well, then, look, we're like brothers. Can you let me in? Corporal Dave Anarino, Navy Marine Corps News. This realistic training exercise was the final stage in a series of exercises. In other news, Secretary of the Navy recently approved the merger of the storekeepers and aviation storekeepers ratings. Conversion from AK to SK for rated sailors will be automatic and is scheduled to be complete by 2003. For more information on the merger, see NAVADMIN 023-00 on the Navy Personnel Command website at www.bupers.navy.mil. Now don't go away, because when we come back, Marines from Okinawa, Japan visit Iwo Jima. Stay right there. I am Abraham Lincoln, and we are on board the USS Abraham Lincoln. Stay tuned for more Navy Marine Corps news. job environments that you can't be anywhere else. Being a SEAL has probably helped me develop as a person. Uh, it's, it's made me who I am. This is a once in a lifetime experience, it's something I would never trade for anything in the world. You get to work with a lot of great guys and you get to do some great things, you know, jumping out of planes and uh, diving in the ocean, rolling out of boats into the, into the sea, you know, it's, uh, it's great training and a good time. Ask a youngster a question and you'll get an honest answer. This little girl asks her brother what he was in last year's Christmas play. A cow, but I didn't want to be a cow. I told you it would be an honest answer. If you want to be a race car driver, how do you learn that job? From driving a regular car. They'll even answer medical questions. When you go to the doctor, he gives you some medicine too, and they check if you're okay. It doesn't matter how complex the question, they'll always have an answer. Uh, well, uh, almost always. Some questions are just too funny. <laughs> but others aren't funny at all. Cameron, this is serious. When it comes to your family's health care, it is serious. 
Visit your TRICARE service center for honest answers to your questions. Welcome back. 55 years ago, the Battle of Iwo Jima became embedded in our memories as one of the bloodiest battles in our nation's history. And recently, some Marines took time out to visit Mount Sarabachi and remember those Marines who epitomized the honor, courage, and commitment we maintain today. Corporal Jeff Camp has our report. The tiny island of Iwo Jima lies about 650 miles south of Tokyo. It's about eight square miles of volcanic rock and jungle. Today, it's a peaceful Pacific Atoll, but it was different 55 years ago. On February 19, 1945, more than 6,000 Marines came ashore to begin what became the bloodiest battle in the history of the Marine Corps. It also became the Marines' finest hour. The battle lasted for more than a month, but these Marines came here for a day. They wanted to remind themselves of the sacrifices made by World War II Marines. This just uh, re-emphasizes what I feel for, for my country and brings it all home to me. The trip was even more special for Marines like Staff Sergeant Jorge Ramirez, who re-enlisted at the site of the famous flag raising. The battle seems a long way off for these Marines, but everywhere they went reminded them of the violent struggle that took place more than half a century ago. It gives you a new appreciation of what, uh, what the Marines many, many years ago had to go through to get to this very spot. It's incredible. Today the island is quiet, except for a few flights on the airstrip. That airstrip is the reason the Marines had to take the island in the first place. It ended up costing tens of thousands of lives, both American and Japanese. The Marines who got the chance to visit Iwo say it helps them understand the Marines of the past and what it means to be a Marine today. Corporal Jeff Camp, Iwo Jima, Japan. Many sailors are familiar with the HARP program, which allows them to return to their hometown and assist local recruiters. Now, the commander of Navy Recruiting Command has another tool to bolster recruiting efforts called Blue Jacket HARP. The difference between HARP and Blue Jacket HARP is that the Navy pays for the cost of transportation under the new program. That brings higher expectations for those involved in Blue Jacket HARP over those on regular HARP duty. One Blue Jacket HARP sailor at Naval Recruiting Station Bellingham, Washington, not only met, but exceeded his recruiter's expectations. Petty Officer Christina Brockman has the story. When MT3 Wesley Travis first heard about Blue Jacket Harp Duty, he immediately volunteered, and he's enjoyed the time he spent in the program. It gives you an opportunity to go home and get back in touch with the community that one was from, mm -hmm. and tell people about your experiences and see if you can help them. Travis's enthusiasm for the Navy's Blue Jacket Harp program has translated into a number of opportunities for Navy recruiting station Bellingham. Since he's gotten here, he's, uh, we're, we're beginning to process uh, into the Navy uh, four to five people. Uh, matter of fact, he got a contract, uh, new shipmate in the Navy this morning. Uh, so his activity has been fantastic. Travis's deep community ties have allowed him to approach many people that might have otherwise avoided contact with regular recruiters. I graduated high school here, graduated Whatcom Community College. I played hockey here for Western Washington University, and I also coached youth hockey. Blue Jacket Harp, like the original Harp duty, normally lasts two weeks. But recruiters at NRS Bellingham were so impressed with Travis's ability, they requested an extension on his two-week tour. Because with the job he was doing, uh, we wanted some more of that. Uh, he's doing, doing great, and he's got uh, contacts and a level of trust in the community uh, that would probably take us uh, months uh, during our tour to develop here. Travis may soon reap rewards for his work. He'll earn a Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal if four of his 40 referrals enlist. Petty Officer Christina Brockman, Navy Marine Corps News. You can find out more about the Blue Jacket Heart Program in NAD Admin 003-00. The Marine Corps has a new website all you hard chargers will want to check out. Cyber Sailor is crazy about this one, and he wants to make sure Marines know about it. Take it away, Cyber Sailor. We gotta hurry, I gotta tell the Marines about Marine Online. Have you heard about Marine Online? Let me show you. 
It's great. I'm gonna need your help though, because Marines Online can only be accessed by Marines. See, I tried to get on the site myself, but because I'm a sailor, it wouldn't let me. Once you've registered and received your password, you can go inside. One of the coolest things about this site is that it gives you an email address that will stay with you for as long as you're in the Marine Corps. Even if I move? That's right, just forge your new address to your new command through this email, and that's it. Now, this site gives you a lot more than just an email address. You can also check information on your pay, like how much you're supposed to get every month, how much of that is supposed to be split pay, and any special pay options that you are entitled to. This website is absolutely secure, so you don't have to worry about anyone stealing your personal information. Marine Online also carries things like your parents' name and address, the name of your present tour, and the billet you are currently fulfilling. I got some awards. Can I update my information? No, this website can only read the information that's currently in your records. If you want to update anything, you have to do it the old-fashioned way. You can use it to print leave chits and special liberty request chits. Any information about your career, family, and pay is here. In fact, Marine Online has warrant officer and enlisted commissioning applications. You can also find friends serving in the same MOS. Truth is, this site has a lot more information than I'm able to cover in a two-minute segment. All the information on this site is remarkable and is protected, so you never have to worry about anyone stealing your personal information. If you have any other sites you'd like to see on the show, send them to me. I'm Petty Officer Joe Hendricks, Navy Marine Corps News. Now Marines have the Marine Online site and, of course, USMC.mil. Two great ways to find out anything you need to know about your Corps. Well, we've reached the end of our show. Thanks for tuning in. We'd like to hear your thoughts and ideas, so send us an email or call our feedback line. The number and address will be up again at the end of the show. Before we leave you, we'd like to say BZ to the crew of USS Samuel Elliott Morrison. The crew and embarked helicopter squadron Golden Sword 23 participated in a rescue at sea. Nearly 100 Ecuadorians were rescued 150 miles off the coast of Guatemala. The rescue came just three weeks into Samuel Elliott Morrison's six-month deployment to the Caribbean and Eastern Pacific. We'd also like to say hello and thanks for watching to our viewers in Fort Wayne, Indiana, who watch us every week on Access Channel 10. We leave you this week with another look at the Navy's leapfrogs. Until next week. Take care. The Secretary of the Navy, Chief of Naval Operations, and Commandant of the Marine Corps testified before a Senate Appropriations Subcommittee for Defense and the Senate Armed Services Committee. The CNO told the Senators the fleet is seeing some improvements in retention based on changes in the pay structure and the improvements in quality of life. On the non-deployed side, we continue to work hard at unburdening our sailors and empowering their commanding officers and better resourcing the fleet as they work their way through this thing called the interdeployment training cycle. And indeed, we are making some progress, but there's much more to do. Secretary Danzig told the Senate's Appropriations Committee Marine Corps recruiting has never looked better. 
I view uh, Marine Corps uh, recruiting as the very model of what we want. We're now into our fifth year of month-by-month -month achievement of goals. Uh, at the same time, Navy recruiting has grown healthier. The Commandant sir, praised the efforts of Marine Corps recruiters the and their incredible success, an but acknowledged the need to continue quality of life enhancements for each Marine in uniform. Uh, and we're working hard to make sure that uh, uh, the quality of life standards that our people in uniform expect for their families, the safe and secure environment of the base, the stable, uh, good educational system, and job satisfaction, spousal contentment with the service life, Overall, uh, as I sit here today, the Air Marine Corps' manpower wise is in good shape. Chief Tom Cardell, Navy Marine Corps News. On the recruiters, uh, General Jones touched on their well-being. I streets of Santa Barbara recently when USS Abraham Lincoln pulled in for a week-long visit. Shops and restaurants were filled with sailors eager to experience this quiet California town. Many sailors took time to visit a local school and show off their Navy. Uh, clown wigs? It's entertainment for us, really. Uh, if we if be born somewhere, you know, I might not have only three days off, but if I can go to a hospital and make just one small child that's crying stop crying for that five minutes, you know, that's, that's worth it for me. Sailors also stayed on board USS Abraham Lincoln to volunteer. With over 2,500 visitors touring the ship every day, sailors were proud to give tours and answer questions. I'm always ready to show off the ship. It's pretty exciting when people get all enthusiastic and uh, they're all excited about this. You see the expression on people's faces and, and how in awe they are of the size of the ship and how clean we're keeping this ship. USS Abraham Lincoln sailors were excited when a very special former president visited. And in case you think your eyes are deceiving you, they aren't. That is former President Abraham Lincoln, or at least the country's best impersonator. It is indeed an honor to have, uh, have a room dedicated to me on this, on this great ship, the USS Abraham Lincoln. Some other Santa Barbara celebrities came out to visit the ship too, and they say they enjoy meeting sailors. Hey, how are you? Well, anytime I've, I've been out uh, on any of the ships, the men and women are so wonderful. They work so hard, and being around them it makes me uh, proud of them, proud to be an American. I'm always so impressed with how hard they work and how seriously they take their jobs. And, um, you know, from a civilian's point of view, it's just so impressive. So we love you guys. Keep it up. From USS Abraham Lincoln, I'm Petty Officer Miranda Williams, Navy Marine Corps News. your help though because Marines Online can only be accessed by Marines. See, I tried to get on the site myself, but because I'm a sailor, it wouldn't let me. Once you've registered and received your password, you can go inside. One of the coolest things about this site is that it gives you an email address that will stay with you for as long as you're in the Marine Corps. Even if I move? That's right, just forge your new address to your new command through this email and that's it. Now, this site gives you a lot more than just an email address. You can also check information on your pay like how much you're supposed to get every month, how much of that is supposed to be split pay, and any special pay options that you are entitled to. This website is absolutely secure, so you don't have to worry about anyone stealing your personal information. Marine Online also carries things like your parents' name and address, the name of your present tour, and the billet you are currently fulfilling. I got some awards. Can I update my information? No, this website can only read the information that's currently in your records. If you want to update anything, you have to do it the old-fashioned way. You can use it to print leave chits and special liberty request chits. Any information about your career, family, and pay is here. In fact, Marine Online has warrant officer and enlisted commissioning applications. You can also find friends serving in the same MOS. Truth is, this site has a lot more information than I'm able to cover in a two-minute segment. 
of their information on the site is remarkable and is protected, so you never have to worry about anyone stealing your personal information. If you have any other sites you'd like to see on the show, send them to me. I'm Petty Officer Joe Hendricks, Navy Marine Corps News. In just a few hours, the United States will sign a peace agreement with Colombia to end the so-called war on drugs. And of course, there are expected to be protesters, so they called in the Marines. We, we were responding to a mission given to us by the military district of Washington to secure and protect the uh, Colombian embassy compound. But protesters aren't their only concern while waiting for the ambassador's arrival. Marines were told to be on the lookout for these two terrorists. And have you haven't had any problems? No, sir, nothing major, sir. The protesters are becoming violent as the time nears for the ambassador's arrival. Woo! Right here, baby! Right here! I don't, I don't understand what their problem is. They just flail those sticks around and try and hit us. We don't, we're not touching them, we're not hurting them, but they hurt me. <laughs> Can I have your attention, please? You are in violation of your demonstration guidelines. Moments later, this suspicious character showed up, and it didn't take the Marines long to recognize who it was. One of the terrorists. Peter, I see they're all crowding around you. Of course, this was just a training exercise, but it was a very realistic one. The FBI has given us the usage of Hogan's Alley, uh, the facility we're at right now, and uh, this, this is about as realistic as it gets. It was so realistic that sometimes the Marines got into their roles a little too much. There's always friction. Uh, when you add aggressors, sometimes the exercise takes a life of its own. But the good part is you're forcing the small unit leaders to make decisions by themselves and not always wait for me to tell them what to do or wait for their platoon sergeant or platoon commander to tell them what to do. Excuse me, I have permission to talk to the ambassador. No, sir. No, sir. I, have I have permission to talk to the ambassador. Can I please come in? No, we need, we need to, get him, we need to yeah, find out what's going back, on in here. Let's go back, please. Yeah, go back. Back. I need to get in there. We do training like this to be prepared, basically, so you don't come out in a real life situation and everything isn't all clustered up. Their main mission was crowd control. Step! 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 And for the Marines new to this type of training, it was a challenge. I've learned that uh, there's a lot of different uh, scenarios and situations that can come, that can ar arise. You never know what uh, people are going to do. You never know how other Marines are going to react. And uh, you just got to train for that and hope for the best. Why are you taking up the best side, sir? I'm an American, yeah. I'm oh, yeah? Well, then, look, we're like brothers. Can you let me in? Corporal Dave Arino, Navy Marine Corps News. When MT3 Wesley Travis first heard about Blue Jacket Harp Duty, he immediately volunteered and he's enjoyed the time he's spent in the program. It gives you an opportunity to go home and get back in touch with the community that one was from mm -hmm. and tell people about your experiences and see if you can help them. Travis's enthusiasm for the Navy's Blue Jacket Heart program has translated into a number of opportunities for Navy recruiting station Bellingham. Since he's gotten here, he's, uh, we're, we're beginning to process uh, into the Navy uh, four to five people Matter of fact, he got a contract, uh, new shipmate in the Navy this morning. Uh, so uh, his activity has been fantastic. Travis's deep community ties have allowed him to approach many people that might have otherwise avoided contact with regular recruiters. I graduated high school here, graduated Rockland Community College. I played hockey here for Western Washington University, and I also coached youth hockey. Blue Jacket Harp, like the original Harp Duty, normally lasts two weeks. But recruiters at NRS Bellingham were so impressed with Travis's ability, they requested an extension on his two-week tour. With the job he was doing, uh, we wanted some more of that. Uh, he's doing, doing great, and he's got uh, contacts and a level of trust in the community uh, that would probably take us uh, months uh, during our tour to develop here. Travis Mason reaped rewards for his work. He'll earn a Navy and Marine Corps Achievement Medal if four of his 40 referrals enlist. Petty Officer Christina Brockman, Navy and Marine Corps News.